Hi, this is Randy Stone. I cover the night beat for the Chicago Star. My stories start in many different ways. This one began with a question and ended when the secret locked in a man's mind brought sudden death. Night Beat, starring Frank Lovejoy as Randy Stone. Tonight I had another story to write. Find it somewhere in the 3,000 square miles of Chicago, among the people who are Chicago. People. (laughs) Ever get the feeling you'd like to forget that word? Close a mental door, snap a psychic lock, and boom, you're alone? Oh, can't do it, pal, because maybe you're people, too. <laughs> so tonight I watched them again. I wandered south on Western Avenue, crossed Addison, and there was Riverview Park. I walked around there, watching the people hurry themselves from one thing to another, each one trying to catch up with a couple of hours of fun. And then I saw a sign that read, Mental Low, the marvel of the age, knows everything. Admission, 25 cents. Okay, I'm a sucker for any man who knows everything and freely admits it. He might even know what makes the world tick, like a time bomb. That'd be worth two bits of anybody's money. I went in. Mental Low was in the middle of his act. Mental of Waterloo proper was begun at 11.30 a.m. on June the 17th, 1815. The battle went through five distinct phases until the French were routed. That right, lady? Well, yes, it is. It sure is. Now, who's next? Who has the next question? Uh, you, sir. You just came in. You uh, seem a little skeptical. Uh, are you talking to me? I am, sir. Maybe you'd like to ask Mendel a question. Oh, all right. Uh, what's the temperature of the sun? Mendel the gentleman thinks he stumped you. The temperature of the visible surface of the sun is about 6,000 degrees centigrade. The interior temperature is estimated at approximately 20 million degrees centigrade. Is that correct, sir? I'll take his word for it. (laughs) And you can, sir. Now, who's next? I got a question. Very good. Ask it. Metalo. Yes. What happened? What happened to you on the 15th of last month? What happened... I... The 15th? Yeah, the 15th. Mental O. 15th. I'm making it out of here. Get him away. That's all for this show. That's all. That's all. Here up. Everything's all right. There up. There up. Okay. Okay. Mental Mental come on. Let's get out of here. It happened again, Phil. Again? You want a doctor? Huh? Now, look, Mr. Rice, said everybody clear out. Yes, I know, but this man collapsed. He looks pretty beat. I said get out. But... Okay. And make it fast. Okay. Real fast. So I made it real fast, like the man said. But as I walked through the carnival grounds, that bird brain of mine that just won't let me grow old gracefully started working overtime. Why did Mentalo do a nosedive when that question was asked? What happened to him on the 15th of last month? <laughs> Listen tomorrow at the very same time And just plain stone will tell you all about it <laughs> But then just as I'd reached the edge of the carnival grounds A voice pushed its way through my thoughts It was the man who'd asked the questions I walked over to the shooting gallery He picked up one of the right I say here you are, mister Test your eye and your aim I sure, sure, thank you Well, that was close, pretty close I'll try to do better Ah, just a little more practice, that's all. A little practice. Yeah, like everything else. Uh-huh. Well, that's better. Hmm. Uh, by the way, what happened to you on the 15th of last month? I... Take your shots and beat it. Why did you ask that question? Give me the rifle, mister. I got five more shots coming. Not tonight. Give me it. I pays my quarter. It takes my shot. I said hand me the rifle. Uh, okay, here. You want to see something? Watch. Well, with bullets or words, the man's good. You ain't a carny man. No? No. But you're awful curious. That's an old family failing and an occupational hazard. Uh Uh-huh. Why did you ask Mentalo that question? 
Did you know how it would affect him? You know, mister, a couple of months back, a guy picks up one of these rifles. He don't know nothing about guns, see? He gets careless, and the gun goes off. At him. He's dead. Accident. Uh, you know, uh, pal, you have a strange, oblique way of making me feel uncomfortable. I uh, see what you mean. Uh -huh. Now you're hitting the bullseye. So long, mister. Okay, twice I got curious, twice I drew blanks. I thought about it some more and then decided to pass it up in favor of the cotton candy. And then I saw Mentolo. He was walking down the midway, but like a man in a trance. There was something about him that screamed, I need help. His little figure seemed odd and congruous against the laughing, hurrying people. I followed him, wondering. And then he stopped in front of the roller coaster. For a moment he watched it, and then, as if suddenly making up his mind, he headed for the ticket booth. That didn't figure, so I bought a ticket, too, and followed him to the loading platform. Tickets for the next ride, please. Tickets for the next ride. Hey, Arm. Oh, thank you. Tickets for the next ride. Tickets for the next ride, please. I got in the car directly behind Mendelow. That day's bewildered expression was still on his face. His hands gripped the side of the car. He half rose in his seat as though he were going to leave, but he sat down again. And then... All right. Lock the safety bars. It's 200 feet up. Lock your safety bars. We started up the long incline toward the top of the 200-foot grade. I kept my eyes on Mentolo. He gripped the safety bar in front of him until his knuckles whitened under the pressure. A couple of kids behind me began to rip me. Hey, Ty, I'm getting scared. Hey, mister, you got to have a throw with you. I did, but I left her in the fun house. Oh, what a square she must in it. Hey, if you get scared, mister, hold on to me. I'll, I'll keep that in mind. Hey, baby, I paid four bits for this. Let's have a song cookie. <laughs> hey, hey, watch it. We're going over. Oh, here we go. And then it happened. He started down the almost perpendicular drop. Mentolo stood up. Ah, Mentolo! Let me go! Let me go! Mentolo struggled to his feet, almost dragged me out of my feet. I held him while we hurt down the long drop and finally hit the bottom. And then Mentolo stopped struggling to get free. He went limp and sagged back into his seat. Why did you stop me? I, I've got to kill myself. Well, he almost did, and me with him. My arms ached from the effort of holding him down. But the ride was finally over. I got him off and away. He let me lead him like a child out of the park and to his cheap hotel room on the north side. I told him who I was and then waited until he spoke. Why? Why didn't you let me do it? Well, I'm just an old busybody. Uh, how about some coffee? No. No, nothing. Just, just leave me alone, please. Uh, just a minute, hmm? I saw your act tonight. I heard the question that sent you off. It's always someone different who asks it. Never the same person twice. Have you ever got hold of a person who asks it? No. I was afraid to. What uh, did happen to you on the 15th of last month? Hmm? Uh, I, I don't know. Something tells me that I must not remember. I must not. Your act is legitimate, isn't it? Legitimate? Yeah, no fake. You know, no shills to ask questions you're sure to know the answer to. I have a photographic memory, Mr. Stone. I never forget anything. Yet you've forgotten one day of your life. Yes. Yes. You you don't believe it, do you? Oh, yes, 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 I do. But uh, why did you try to kill yourself? Because I know that if I do remember, I, I wouldn't be able to stand it. Don't you have any clue at all? Two things. Two things that mean nothing. Well, maybe they do. What are they? It just streamers in the sky and the name Helene. Streamers in the sky and Helene. Who is Helene? I don't know anybody by that name. I don't. I tell you, I don't. All right, all right. Now, take it easy, Mello. Oh, get out and leave me alone. Get out. Yeah. Get out and leave him alone. Phil. Phil. Well, well, my friend the Barker. Hello. What are you doing here? I brought Mello home after he tried to kill himself. What? Mello. You all right? I'm all right, Phil, but I, I I, don't want to remember. Look, Phil, for what it's worth, he's sick. He's got to see a doctor. No, Phil, get him out of oh, here. Oh, miss, mister, get out. But this man is... Get out and don't come back. Because if you do anything that hurts Mandelow, I'll kill you. A 
And now, back to Night Beat and Randy Stone. Like I said before, sometimes you'd like to seal off the rest of the world and forget it. Let a thousand people die in a flood, we click our tongues and say, how terrible. And that's as far as it goes. But let one kid scratch himself on a nail and 87 people come running with the iodine. The human reality of what happens to a lot of people at once is too big for us. But what happens to one individual is something each of us can get hold of. I don't know, maybe that's what sent me to a friend of mine, a psychiatrist whom I dragged out of bed. Oh, but, Randy, what concern is mental all of yours? Oh, I don't know, Ken. Why'd you become a psychiatrist? Why? <laughs> I see what you mean. Okay, okay, you see what I mean. Now, what what gives with mental law? Self-protection. His mind is protecting him. Whatever happened on the 15th of last month is suppressed. The memory is horrible enough to force a complete blackout. Yeah, but he remembers two things, Ken. Streamers in the sky and the name Helena. What what do the uh, streamers mean? Almost anything. This guy's symbol for something else. Yeah, he tried to kill himself tonight. Will he try it again? Most likely. Well, uh, well, what'll set him off again? Hard telling. Question, object, anything. Was uh, Mentolo upset when you left him? Upset? He was practically hysterical. I'd better go with you. Oh, you're worried too, huh? I, uh, I'd feel better if I saw him. Let's go. Here's the room. It's right here, 6, uh, 12. Randy, try the door. Open. You know where the light is? I think I saw a switch by the door. Uh, uh. Randy! Man below. Don't try to unfasten that, Buckle. Cut the belt. Lift him. Hurry. All right. Cut that belt. Hurry up, Randy. Is he alive? I think so. All right. Easy, Ken. There. Pulse is still strong. He couldn't have been hanging more than a few seconds before we came in. Poor little devil, Ken. Look, Randy. What? There's something clutched in his hand. But, why, yes, that's a key. That's an old-fashioned house key. Now, why? I, I don't know. Well, what's your guess? It's hard telling, Randy, but I do know this. He's no longer responsible for his actions. But then the next time he tries anything like this, maybe nobody will be around to stop it. Ken, is there anything that we can do? Is there anything you can do? It's up to him, Randy, but... Well, um, let's get him to my office. We'll see what we can do there. Feeling better, Mentalo? Yes, thank you. You know where you are? I... No. No, where's Phil? Oh, you're Barker? I don't know. Now, now listen to me, Mentalo. You, uh... You tried to hang yourself. Do you remember that? Yes. After Phil left, I, I felt so hopeless. You had this in your hand, this key. Look at it. I, I found it in my pocket, and then I knew I had to kill myself. Is it your key? Do you remember what it's for? No. You won't remember that, Randy. Oh. Well, who, who, who are you? He's a friend of mine, and he's a doctor, Mentalo. Well, I don't want to. Now, look, twice tonight you tried to kill yourself. Once is enough to call in the police. No. Oh, don't worry, don't worry. That's not what we want to do. I want to help you, and the doctor wants to help you. Please believe that. No one can help me because I can't remember, and I... I must not remember. The police will ask questions when they learn you tried to kill yourself. But it's no business of theirs or yours. Why don't you leave me alone? Why do you care? Oh, that's the same old question asked the same old way, and this time I've run out of answers. Make up one of your own. I don't know. Uh, I, I'm sorry. I, and I believe you do want to help. Yes, yes, we do. Now, look. There'll be no need to call in the police if you let us help you. You're sick. Do you know that? You're sick. Let us help you. I... Oh, all right. Good. Now, you trust Mr. Stone, don't you? Uh, yes, 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 I do. All right. You're going to sleep. When you feel this hypodermic needle, start counting backward from a hundred. Just a little sting... Then start counting backward from a hundred. Now, Mr. Stone. Mr. Stone. What, Randall? You stay. Stay near. Oh, yes, yes, I'll stay. Start counting. Ninety-nine. 
15th of last month. The 15th of last month. Streamers in the sky. What streamers? What are they? Where are they? The Aurora Borealis. The Northern Lights? Yes. Yes. Aurora. I, I went to Aurora. Aurora, Illinois? Yes. I was there. Ah. Now you're in Aurora. Yes. Where did you go there? The house. Yes, I... I've got to open the door. And the key... Here. Here's the key. Mm. Unlock the door. She's going to be here. Helene. Who is Helene? I love her. She loves me. There's the room. The room? All right. All right, now you're in the room. What did you do? I waited. Waited for her. And she came in. And then... I... I... Helene! 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 Ken, is he all right? Yes. We still don't know what happened. There's one way to find out, Randy. What, find the house in Aurora and take him there? That's it. <laughs> what we've done here is bring him to recall that far. You see? Now it's a question of bringing back the whole thing, bit by bit. Ken didn't go along. Mentalo didn't want him to. It wasn't a long drive in miles. I watched Ventolo when I could. His face was contorted in an agony of effort as we drove through Aurora slowly, looking for one street, one house. And then... That... That house. But it's all boarded up. Are you sure, Ventolo? It's that house. All right. The house set back from the street. The only light came from a street lab half a block away. Mentolo walks slowly ahead of me, up the walk toward the porch, and then up the porch stairs. Open the door. Lock. It, it was locked that day, too. Well, unlock it. You've got the key. Yes, yes. The key. Where's the light switch? No. No light. All right, all right. We'll use the flashlight. Now, go ahead, Manuel. Go ahead. Now, there's no furniture here, Manuel. This, this house is vacant. Now, this is her house. I, I know. There were three of us here. Three. And this is the room. Go on. Manuel, think. <laughs> well, you've got to think. The only way you'll remember what happened is the only way you'll find out what's torturing you. She's here. She came to me in this room. Helene came to you here? Because she loved me. Where is she now? Her clothes. In this, this closet. Mentolo walked to the closet, opened it. A row of dresses hung there. A faint odor of perfume drifted through the room. For a moment, Mentolo stood there, and he started toward the door. Mentolo, where are you going? I know. I know. The base. Wait for me. Down there. Down there. There's no one here, Mentolo. No one at all. The basement's empty. Not empty. She... Under the earth where I put her. Under the earth. Get it out. Come on, get a hold of yourself. 
<laughs> what are you talking about? I killed her. She came to me because... Because we loved each other. I was holding her in my arms when I killed her. Now she... She's down here. Under our feet. I killed her. <laughs> Who was she? I killed her. I You're killed satisfied her. now? You're satisfied? Bill! Bill! What are you doing here? You had to stick your nose in. You had to make him tell, didn't you? Mantelo, are you sure? Are you sure? Yeah, he's sure. And so am I, because I helped him put her here. He'd never known if you didn't make him remember. Who was Helene? You're never going to know. Helene. Helene. You had to go and make him remember. It was all over. Nobody would have known because we traveled with the yak. Yes, but somebody did know. Because somebody asked him tonight what happened on the 15th. Somebody always asked that question. Why? And who was Helene? Helene? Helene was... Was his... His wife! What? He was jealous because she never loved him. She loved me. Then how could you have killed her, Mentalo? Listen to me. You only think you killed her. Because if she hadn't come here, she wouldn't have been killed. You blamed yourself. That's what it was. And then you forgot. The shock made you forget. Don't listen to her, Mentalo. Don't listen. No, I... I remember now. I remember... You killed her. Made me believe... But you're not going to tell anybody else about it. Both of you are going to stay here. I'm not afraid anymore, Phil. Because I know now I didn't kill her. You did, Phil. Uh, Mentalo went toward Phil. Phil had a gun pointed at him. I jumped back and turned off the flashlight. For a moment, there wasn't a sound. And then... Mentalo. Where are you? Mentalo. Wait, Mentalo. Don't move. You hear me? Don't move. Mentalo. Stop! Mentalo! Elaine is here, Phil. Down here. Shut up! Mentalo. I'm all right. Good. Phil. What's it going to be now? Get me out of here! Away from her! Get me out of here! Well, it's almost dawn now. I can go home to my little trundle bed and sleep the day away. <laughs> Yo ho ho, the reporter's life for me. Oh, sure. But anyhow, I got my story. Two men. One whose feelings of guilt forced him to believe he killed the woman he loved. And another man whose feelings of guilt made him a gibbering coward. But uh, where's the moral? That someone always pays for a crime? Sure, but who is guilty? Maybe we should say what is guilty. What's in that space above our eyes that makes us act the way we do? That makes us people? <laughs> To louse up Shakespeare, there are more things in the darkness of the mind than are dreamed of in your philosophy, Mr. Stone. Oh, ho, ho. you can call me Randy, pal. Just call me Randy. Copy, boy. Night Beach, starring Frank Lovejoy, is produced and directed by Warren Lewis and edited by Larry Marcus. Tonight's script was written by Russell Hughes with music by Frank Worth. The part of Mentalo was played by Ben Wright. Listen next week at this same time and every week as Randy Stone searches through the city for the strange stories waiting for him in the darkness.